Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at uh, picking up where we left off with the grill project and we'll have a look at how we take that stainless steel in a roughed out form and turn it into something beautiful. Stay tuned. Well, I hope you had an opportunity to view the last video where I showed you how I made these steel hammer forms in order to produce the stainless steel grill parts. So I'm using a, an aircraft rivet gun here, so not an air hammer in order to knock this out, with some tooling that I purchased from TM Technologies as I continuously broke the parts that, uh, of the tooling that I made myself. So don't forget to support those local folks. So here I am just chasing the rest of that grill out and then finally moving around to the finest of fine details before we get going. I don't think I actually tricked any of the eagle-eyed viewers. They would have noticed that that was the wrong side. So yeah, I've started the second half. Anyway, here's back to the original uh, video of just cutting the blank out and getting it ready. Now, in order to start uh, the refinement of that surface, I've just put on a little bit of blue uh, metal dye. You could use a uh, magic marker. It doesn't really much matter. And I've started just the the sort of careful and, and terrible process of picking the surface. You go in and just work it ever so carefully, trying to get this surface as absolutely perfect as possible. This took actually almost weeks to get this done. Okay, so that's the first 50 mil, maybe, well, might be 75, so about three inches. That's the first three inches done. Um, that takes a long time to do. Okay, so I got to pick the rest of the surface. I got to shut the cameras off, turn the radio on. It's going to take me a few hours. That was actually one of the worst spots. I do that habitually. I usually start at the hard stuff first because then the rest of it's easy. And there's still lots of surface correction to do. I am a little bit afraid that I cut that flange a bit thin, uh, but I did test it out with my turning device, which is a wrench, and it seemed to work okay. So um, if you're wondering how hard the hitting is, because this is very different from forming. We're now just planishing. So again, another area where the tool got away from me is right in here. So this is going to take a long time. It's also on the straight, which is like, if it isn't straight there, it's never going to get straight anywhere. So you take a look at a bad spot there. I set it in on the dolly and then it's just this. I'm just moving the surface out a little bit. So as much as anything, I'm, I'm sort of bending it, not, not stretching it. So I'm trying not to stretch it. So you can see it got a little better, just a few taps. It's always getting the last percent that's terrible. So finger on the back of the hammer, right? We're not driving nails, so. You can actually see it on the back side. Because as you're hitting the highs, they're going to shine up. So where these square edged hammers are really handy is I can work it right into that edge carefully. Okay, so you know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the day. Um, so when we come back, this will be all sanded up and ready to polish. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Uh, I think you can see that's pretty good. That's just sanded to a thousand grit, by the way. That's not yet polished. And this will never, it'll never show very well. But maybe I'll drop the camera down and zoom it around. Okay, now is the dangerous part. So because it's only sanded and it's not yet polished, I can still, I got to turn the flanges. So now's the time I got to turn the flange. I'm a little bit worried about it. But um, hey, we'll see how it goes. I don't have any fancy tools to do the flange turning with. Um, I actually just use an adjustable wrench. Have done for years. It works fine. All right, so let's uh, let's get rolling and see if we can get this one done. Just going very carefully. Don't want to get too greedy when you do this trick. <clears throat> a little bit at a time. You just just let the wrench sort of feel. You just kind of let the wrench feel the angle so you can feel the corner, square it, 
little tilt, little tilt. That's it. I always figure if I can't move to the next position without having to change the opening on the wrench, I've bent too much. Again, these little tricks, they need a million dollars to do it. So Sometimes it's hard to stop yourself from bending too much. Again, I don't care if it takes takes an extra half hour to do it, extra hour, extra day at this point, who cares? Yeah, it was never going to work on that inside. It was way too hard to fold it over, so I had to grab the vice grips out and turn it with vice grips, which is terrible. Then I needed to smooth it off because the vice grip, of course, will leave a little bit of a mark. Oops. So after hours of struggling with turning this flange, Again, I've got a little piece of nylon, I think it is, that I'm using as the backer here. And I've just changed up my plier game. So I was using a pair of channel locks. They were not really giving me enough leverage to do this easily. Um, and their jaws aren't parallel. So I bought a pair of these. This is just a pair of Nipix. And then the part number is right there. 8603250. And this is their two inch model. The jaws go parallel and there's lots of more, there's more multiplication of force in the pliers anyways. So I just thought I'd show you down this far edge. Again, we're just dealing with the final touch-ups here. Nothing big, but it's a bit wavy down the line. Shouldn't cause any problems, but what we don't want is a sharp or inconsistent edge to come up against the painted, the final painted surface and cause us any problems. So once again, just the plastic backer up into that corner, pliers down, and then we just give it a little pinch. Now I did most of this in video laps before. The trick is just to get the pliers sort of at the right angle for what you want to do. Like these exert a ton of force, probably literally. Um, so a little bit easier to do. Well, quite a lot easier to do, actually. Who am I kidding? A uh, ton easier to do. And because of their nature, you can also make it so they stop and you don't go too far. Okay, because we don't want to pinch this flat. I, I want this radius. All right, so any area where I kind of just look at the side of it and I see that it's inconsistent, then I just hop in, give it a little pinch, and we're done. All right, so I'm just going to finish this top edge, then we'll go check the fitment. All right, so here we are at the grill. Clearly, I've been trying to fit this up as I've been going along, and I've known that something wasn't quite right the entire time. Uh, but not faking it till you make it, just trying to get the job done. Because as you're closing these flanges over, again, you're changing the dimension of everything as you go, and you still have the ability to twist and turn these trim pieces to try to make them uh, fit up really nice. But what I found is I'm a little long on this bottom leg. Again, I want this to fit down. There's the mounting boss here, and there's another mounting boss there. And they have to fit down on the mounting bosses, right? I mean, they're going to be offset it just a little bit with the other grill material in there. And then we've got to lock it all in, but they have to be able to get down into it. And I think when I was trying to do my calculation for how much to take uh, off from the ultimate size for this roll, either I got it wrong or when the plasma cut was done, it was wrong. And I've stretched everything up because that will also shorten the leg, done everything I can. But you can see if I roll it up, this dimension seems fine here from here to here, right? So I'm down, everything's okay. If I roll it the other way, again, this dimension seems okay, right? Nothing nothing I'm going to worry about anyways. A little bit there in the corner. Uh, the problem appears to be this leg. Is I can't get the, both of those things to happen simultaneously. The top leg looks fine. Again, I can get it down if I hold it up at the bottom here. I can get this kind of forced into place. This length looks fine. Again, all of this is super fine work. So oh, a little bit tough to know where I screwed it up, but I did. So it does fit there. We start to push it in. 
but it doesn't fit down as far as it needs to go. So I am going to have to cut and weld this, which does seem to be insane, but you know, I've probably taken several weeks worth of worrying about it. Uh, now we're just going to have to do it. So we're just going to cut it. The trick is where to make the cut. I think I'm going to sneak the cut over towards the edge. Uh, it needs to be in a place that's reasonably linear. And the amount that we're going to take out of this is really small, like less than an eighth of an inch. In fact, I think if I just cut it um, and then put it back together, the whatever the thickness of the cutting disc is, is probably going to be sufficient. Uh, so I'm going to just fit it back in, weld it up. Um, well, anyway, let's see how that goes. It'll go back together somehow. Sprunged a little bit there. Not too bad though. Mm. Clean it up and I'll see if it fits. Now we can get a pretty good look at what we've got. We can kind of hold everything in place again first. I'm sort of checking I'm pretty satisfied with most of this. Like that all looks good to me. Uh, I'm not worried about bends and little inconsistencies here but it does look like i'm going to have to trim off significantly more than i thought it's not an eighth of an inch that's probably three sixteenths of an inch and hold it there overlap it a little bit to where i think it's kind of going to go again we're going to tune the heck out of this because it's got to be perfect but that'll get us in the ballpark we'll sneak up on it here and um and we'll bring it back when we're welding, I guess, because the rest of this pain is not really worth watching. Okay, so that's it, and we're cut. I've removed about a, geez, a good heavy quarter of an inch out of this. And when we put it back together, what we don't want to do is have things out of alignment on the long line. So the trick is, I don't even know if that makes any sense when I say it, but you don't want to set it back in and put it, because you can put this together almost almost any way right you know you could be kinking it one way kinking it another way you want to make sure you're straight you want to make sure you're in line you want to be sure that at the end of the day once we cut it it looks like we never made the mistake that we made you'll know i'll know but who else so in this case the way it's sprung it's this inside edge that needs to join and it's the curve that has to meet it uh, now I found a little bit of aluminum tube as a backer. It's the same size. We can clamp it on here, clamp it on there. That aligns the radius. And then we know, we just know that we have to go and get the front edge or that inside edge needs to be, gosh, this is more confusing than it needs to be. The inside edge needs to be fine. So I just need to stretch this down. In other words, <laughs> when I put it together, I'm going to, I gotta tack it here first, right? I'll tack it here first. And then the fact that it wants to naturally do this to me, I'll make it kind of work because I'll tack it here to get the angle that I want. I'll then fix it there and then we'll tack it in two or three more places and then weld it up. It should not be uh, too much of a problem. I'm not gonna tell you that it isn't gonna be a challenge because of course it will be. Yeah, welding 304 stainless steel that is uh, 24 gauge. <laughs> That's not child's play. Just fitting this up was a total nightmare. Sorry for being so confusing with it. It wasn't actually all that hard to weld. The aluminum tube also serves as a heat sink and a dam on the backside for uh, a little bit of gas coverage so that I didn't get any contamination. Once done, get the grinder out and get back to polishing. Okay, so this is how that surface is finished up. And again, it's gonna be hard to see, but that's sanded to 1200 grit wet. That's how I've done that. 
just working your way through the grits. It just takes a little bit of time. Make sure I got all the edges done nicely and anywhere that's going to be seen. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, so, okay, all we're going to do now is just buff it, which is going to take about five minutes and then it'll be done. And I'll show you as we come back. All right, that's a look at them all polished, or at least this side anyway. Yeah, it's real nice. Turned out great. And at the same time, we've started the other side. That's a day and a half worth of work just to get to there. It sure is nice having this carbon fiber nose piece. Uh, it weighs nothing. Uh, if you haven't watched the carbon fiber videos, by the way, go back. That's maybe why you're here, who knows, but carbon fiber beautiful stuff anyway there's the finish for the grill right here all right we'll show you a little zoom in again the stuff's impossible for you to see uh, that's where the repair was which is down here right repair down in here can't feel it can't not even there anymore anyway so now we have the grill is fitting in the aperture and the nose panel. So that's done. It did have to have a little modification. We missed it by about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch. I have no idea how I was that far out, whether it was the plasma or me or just a lack of knowledge of knowing how to do this stuff. That's my ultimate guess is with the folding over of the metal, I'm adding distance to either side. It just, I shouldn't have been quite so precise. So now you have a little better idea how that might work out. Anyway, um, we're going to move on because we've got two to do. So uh, next episode is going to be a little while from now. Uh, but that's a wrap for this one. It's the same thing, just rinse and repeat for the other side. It still will probably need to be cut and welded. And then we'll come back. And in the next episode, we should have this grill completely finished up, right? So we cannot attach the grill using giant orange clamps. We're going to have to find a method to do that. There is also a crossbar uh, for these grill panels. So we're going to need to fit up the crossbar. And then there's the the original grill piece that goes in behind. It's not mesh, but it's kind of a perforated metal part. Uh, all right, so with that, that's a wrap. Anyway, thanks for coming along. I uh, do appreciate all the views. Don't forget, like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell, do whatever you need to do. We'll catch you on the next video, and uh, don't forget, keep your stick on the ice.